So Jesus, um, we, we love you. We pray that your Holy Spirit will bring joy to our hearts today. Fill this room, fill every believer, and please keep the devil far away. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. 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 How many of you like those old church choirs? Anybody? And then get up and let's sing about it. <laughs>
Prisoners set free. 
Praise God. Praise the Lord. 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 Let's worship. How many of you love Jesus? Amen. Worship. He's got you. He's got you. Because then they gave said person uh, my phone number, <laughs> which I want them to, I think. <laughs> because then said person called me. Now, have you ever handled conflict 
with in a way that you regret yeah. after it was over. This was a necessi necessity to deal with this particular conflict, and so we did. And so this person called me. Now, have you ever been by a show of hands blessed out? And I don't mean it in a good way. Almost everybody knows. That maybe we could say told off. Set straight, put in your place. Somebody gave you a piece of their mind. Now you didn't ask for a piece of their mind. They just felt the need, sometimes passionately, to give you a piece of their mind. You kind of feel like giving it back. So what I learned in this, I may be getting some details backwards, but the bottom line is I got a phone call, and I got to tell you, many, many times, more than I can probably share with you, I've done it wrong. Conflict. I've done it wrong. I've made mistakes. I'll share more about my sins, but not in detail later on in the message. But in this particular case, I felt the Holy Spirit wanted me to speak softly, to hear the person out, and the person had a lot to say. Hey, a lot to say. Um, was blessing out said servant and said pastor that were here at the church. I was at home at the time. And then after I listened, and after, and I want you to know, if you're doing what the Holy Spirit put on our hearts as our policy to help people, if you're doing that, I got your back. Amen? This particular person did not want me to have these folks' back, and uh, this person had been removed from the property because this person was using profanity and going off, frankly, on the people that are up here serving Jesus and, uh, and I was not going to let that go. So I said, well, um, I'm sorry you feel that way, but um, I'm in agreement with a pastor that had been a pastor for 30 years. He just suddenly was being called the devil. I'm thinking, no, I know that guy pretty well. I don't agree with you. The, the lady that was being called the devil, um, I don't agree. I've worked with that particular lady for years. I don't agree with you, ma'am. Was that said a lot? Sorry. It was a female. I don't agree that the person you're talking about is the devil. And then said person, said lady, took it upon herself. In this conflict, I'm talking softly. The reason I feel like it did okay is because Mindy said I handled it well. well. And let me tell you, if she said I didn't handle it well, she would have let me know. <laughs> She's good about that. So I was just trying to keep my cool, trying not to go in the flesh, and then she proceeded to call me the devil. And this church is full of devils, and then other names I was called, and I wished her a, a, a good evening, and we ended the conversation. Conflict happens in life, and especially if you're going to follow Jesus Christ. Amen. It's it's inevitable. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, we talked about this several weeks ago. We'll talk about it more today. Some hills we need to die on. Other hills, be willing to, that is. Other hills, no. We need to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's telling us. So we come back to our scripture. Paul had received Jesus' gospel. The good news from Jesus Christ. The gospel of grace not of works. Please pray with me. I pray yet again this morning, as I have been just throughout the morning, Lord, please fill us with your Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Lord. Help us understand what's happening in your word right here. Help us to, to, to not only understand, but to walk out of here prepared to live our lives in a way that's consistent with your word. Help your servant now as I share. I need the Holy Spirit with this uh, Issue regarding conflict. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So Paul's taking the gospel uh, to the Gentiles. There was some issues uh, with Judaizers and those who believed that works needed to be added to salvation. Uh, there were those that were teaching that circumcision needed to happen uh, to become a Christian. 
And we talked about this, and Paul said, no, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Paul had made his way to Jerusalem. He went once before after his salvation, but then 14 years later, he went back. We learned in chapter 2, we learned this in chapter 2 of Galatians. We find Paul, the apostle, and the other apostles, James, Peter, John, the other apostles, they're all on the same page in regards to you. You're saved by grace. We find them on that same page. That said, how easy we forget. Please stand out of reverence to God's word. Galatians 2, verse 1. Let's gather the context. Galatians 2, verse 1. The Apostle Paul writing, Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took who? Right. Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into what? Into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of but of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they also seem to be somewhat in conference, added nothing to me. But counterwise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, that is to the Jews, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, who Cephas? Peter. And John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the, great, the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. They're on the same page that we should go unto the heathen, that is the Gentiles, and they unto the circumcision, that is the Jews. Only they, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was for to do. Praise God for his word. Please be seated. We come to verse 11. Remember, almost always, almost always, not always, the style of preaching here is verse by verse through the context. And so, if something pops up and the Holy Spirit has it for you that day, you know I wasn't looking at you or spying on you. Amen? Rebuke the rock. We're not talking about the rocks crying out. We're talking about the Peter. The Peter rock. The, the rock that is Peter. Who would rebuke Peter? Well, we know Jesus did. Get me behind me, Satan. But my goodness, Peter? Who would rebuke that guy? Really? Verse 11. But when Peter, the rock that is, was... Come to Antioch. That's, that's Paul's stomping ground. That's his home church. I was stood him to his face. What? Everybody said that with me. What? <laughs> More passionate. What? What? Very good. Are you kidding me? Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. You don't have to do every word. Wow. And in the face confrontation with two of the church. Pillars. I mean, these are these are the these are the guys. I mean, these are the guys. One going to the Jews, one to the Gentiles. I mean, we're talking about Peter walked on water. We're talking about Peter. We're talking about, we're talking about Peter and the Apostle Paul knocked down on the Damascus Road by Jesus Christ Himself. Two of the of the most famous apostles this world has ever known, and they're face to face. Two of these early church leaders. I've been 
involved in a few of them face to face. I'm ballparking here, but in 16 years of being here, I guess it is, going on 70, maybe somewhere between 10 and 20 conflicts face to face, face to face. And as I mentioned earlier, well, let me move on. I, I'm gonna confess, certainly I was not always in the right. And sometimes you can be in the right, but it's how we handle it. That's, that's, one of, yeah, that's one of my struggles, like, um, especially when you're in the right, you want to be passionate about it, then it turns to anger, then it gets ugly, then there's bitterness. See how the devil works? Oh, you're right. Don't let him get away with that. But if you add, that's what I say, 10 to 20 in 16 years, but if you add streets to that, Travis, <laughs> probably 10 every month, Maybe add some exaggeration to that, but streets brings a new animal, a new, uh, a new, a new challenge with conflicts here for sure, right? Raise your hand, either at streets or otherwise, if you've ever had some sort of conflict here. Okay. Raise your hand if you handled every one of them perfectly. Good job, Barry. I'll see if the altar room or not. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. I think he, he caught the first part. So the bottom line is conflict, it happens, right? It's inevitable. Um, I don't, let me be clear. Let me be abundantly clear because I don't like conflict. I don't like it. Your heart races, the adrenaline's pumped up. It typically ends with uh, sadness, bitterness, then you got to go. Reconcile. I don't like conflict, even if it's necessary. I don't, I don't like take pleasure in that at all. And let me share with you that if we say that we do, then that's pride. For example, driving here on a busy day and somebody cuts you off. And you, why are you laughing, Pat? Did that happen today? And, and you bless them out. Give them a piece of your mind. You know, that's the one with the bumper sticker that says, uh, honk if you love Jesus on your car, you know. And that's your, hey, you just cut me off. No one in here has ever done, or at least thought anything like that, right? Right? Where was I going? You need to sign it. Christians aren't perfect just for you. There you go. There you go. So as soon as you yell at somebody to cut you off, tell them, I'm sorry. Don't ever do that again. Jesus loves you. But then the pride is, then you come and you can't wait to tell somebody how you gave somebody a piece of your mind because they did you wrong. That don't sound too biblical to me, does it? Romans 12, 18. If it be possible, and it's not always possible, but if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. There's a biblical truth we can hang our hat on, right? Some hills I shouldn't have tried to die on. How about you? And the Holy Spirit's made that clear to me. I've been wrong at times, and I let pride and sin get in the way. And then we got to go back and confess that, seek reconciliation, forgiveness, right? And I wish conflict was never necessary. Did Jesus face conflict? You better believe he did. John 8, he was, he was in conflict constantly with those that were trying to kill him. The Pharisees, the Sadducees. And he was bold. He didn't want anybody to die in their sins and go to hell. But he said if they didn't believe on him, they would. Didn't he say that? Yeah. And he also told them that their father was the devil. Jesus was in conflict. And he was even in conflict with Peter. When Peter had his mind and his eyes and his heart on the things of this world. And then, as I mentioned earlier, 
Jesus told them, yeah, I got to go to the cross. And, he, and Peter rejected that. And Jesus, I'm paraphrasing. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, he was, the spirit behind Peter's flesh was, he said, Satan. Can a Christian be more motivated by the dark side? I have, been, I confess it. Anytime I'm in the flesh with the pride, that ain't no, God hates pride. Right? So as we move towards this conflict between Peter and Paul, keep these things in mind. So I wish conflict was never necessary. Serving Jesus, conflict is inevitable. What does that mean? It's going to happen. You can see John 15, 18, 27. In fact, the more you turn into Jesus and fall in love with Jesus and surrender your life to Jesus, expect it. Because, because you'll be you'll becoming, you, how it says, you'll be transformed and you'll be coming out of the world, out of the ways of this world. You'll be coming light, removing yourself from darkness. And there's a lot of people in your family and friends and, and, and people at work and people you know that aren't going to like that. And it's going to be a rub and there's going to be friction. And Jesus makes clear in John 50, 18 through 27 that the world hated him. Why? Because he exposed what? He exposed sin. His light shined the light all over sin. That's why the Pharisees couldn't stand it. They, they didn't need to be saved in their minds. Focus, Jeff. So John 15, 18 through 27, if they if, if the world hated Jesus, what do you think? They're going to hate us too. Amen. Now, how do we respond to that? Well, in love. In love. I probably have got it wrong, conflict, especially early in my Christianity and definitely before I was saved. Definitely before I was saved. I mean, there was just all pride. Oh, yeah? Let's go. I'm right. Let's, let's, let's fight. Let's argue. Let's have it out. That ain't of Jesus. But even after I was a baby, you know, baby in Christ, first saved, still some of that was definitely, some of that was lingering. So my point is, many, many, many times I've got this whole conflict thing wrong. You have the answer to conflict in the Bible, Matthew 18, starting in verse 15. And it starts by seeking reconciliation. Let's say... Let's say that grace, how could me and grace ever have conflict? It's probably impossible. But let's say that uh, uh, I made her mad and she made me mad. Our first step was what? To come together and seek the grace of Jesus Christ and love each other and find reconciliation. For the record, we're not mad at each other, right? Good. Good. <laughs> Proverbs 15.1 says a this is where I got right several nights ago. God was helping me. And there were people in the room listening. So if I'd have got it wrong, that would have been a bad witness. So Proverbs 51, a soft answer turns away, turneth away wrath. What's wrath mean? Anger. Well, grievous words stir up anger. So times, for example, at streets, when I've been in conflict with people that didn't want to come along with God's program, and I went to the flesh, I got that verse wrong. I would get stirred up in that conflict, and I would bring volume back at them, and I'd be like, you ain't doing that here? And some of you have seen that. I'm sorry that you've seen that, Sonstown. I'm sorry that you've seen me do that. Some of you have seen that. If I hand you my glasses, Mark. Tell me to put them back on and go sit in the corner. I'm in a bad place. Right? I'm not in a good place. We laugh, but it's true. Don't, you know, that's bad. But there's times like that last week, I got it right, speaking softly. And, uh, and even if they don't come around to your way of thinking, I think God is pleased when we handle it correctly. So Paul, back to our text, in Peter's face, I sense, although I can't, I'm not there, but I sense the emotions are aggressive. It's a room full of people. Okay? And, um, and, and Paul is agitated about something. Paul had a little flame within him. I'm thinking he could go to the flesh, but this was that hill. 
Talk about church conflict. Talk about church conflict. Every church has had conflict if they're trying to follow Jesus sooner or later. Something happens sometimes far too often. Far too many kills that shouldn't be died, you know, attempted to die. But talk about your church conflict. This is two of the pillars. This issue is still, though, about grace. Not Mrs. Grace here, but the unmerited favor of God grace. It, it's that hill, the grace hill. And we're back to the hill, a hill that's worthy of dying on. And Paul knew that. Paul knew that. Many church conflicts are not, I'm going to say the word three times, not, one more time, not hills to die on. Not hills to die on. This makes you sad. And, and you ever come out of a church business meeting with just a pit in your stomach like, that was not of God. Anybody? And we want to make sure that we're responding in God's love when those things happen. Many church conflicts, not hills to die on. In fact, doing so could anger God. Does God still get angry? You know, someone that you could ask, you could ask Korah. Who knows, who knows who Korah is? That's the one, Korah. Ask Korah, and Korah rose up against him. Moses. He rose up, he and some others, I think it was 250, rose up against Moses. Um, they were aggravated often and complaining and griping and whining because because Moses had the nerve to listen to God and lead them out of Egypt, away from the wonders of Egypt where they were slaves. Egypt, a picture of the world, a picture of slavery, and Moses was in the process, but their, their complaining got them a long journey in the wilderness, didn't it? Yeah. And that generation died there. But Korah, he had rose up against Moses, and this was a... a Children of God conflict, if there ever was one. And you can read about that in number 16. And Korah, you know, you really can't talk to Korah about it. I was, I was trying to make the point, but you can't. You know why? Because God opened up the earth and swallowed him and the whole family and a bunch of others, and then a bunch of that were part of that rebellion were chewed up with fire by God. That is a chapter that uh, I would encourage you to read, number 16. So think about Paul. I mean, scripturally we believe that there's no hierarchy. I mean, Peter's a servant, Paul's a servant. That's what, the, Paul, bond servant to Jesus. Gave up slavery to sin, bond servant to Jesus. You with me? It's not like one's dominant over the other. It's, but they did have different mission fields, if you will. But think about it, though. Paul is going to the guy that walked on water, and he's in his face, and he's going to rebuke him. So if you think about Moses being rebuked uh, by Korah, Paul had to be pretty confident in his willingness to die on Grace Hill. Amen? Amen. Be sure if you're going to rise up against a boss, rise up against mom or daddy, rise up in a church against leadership, rise up against anything like that, please be sure God is in it. Be sure it's, it's a hill to die on. I heard recently that one of the major denominations is splitting because of the issue of homosexuality. Um, it's not, we love everybody, but homosexuality is a sin. And just like many sins. And, and so it's not okay to say homosexuality is okay because it's, read Romans 1 if you want some scripture back. But the point is, I was pleased to see that that particular denomination is taking a stand and it's the whole denomination is dividing because there's some people in that denomination that said, no, the path we're headed is not of the word of God. It's not good. Praise God. That's a hill to die on. 
Yeah. Right? Be sure it is a hill to die on. And I am amazed, and I think some of you might be as well, at the petty hills, right? The petty hills we consider dying on. Is God in it? Ask the question, God, are you in this? Or is it pride? Search me, God. Sometimes we just need to let our words be here. On the face of Peter, back to our context, why? Because it says here, because he was to be blamed. Paul's very confident in what's going on here. He's not happy about it. Okay, why? What's the problem? What is going on? Why was Peter, of all people, to be blamed? I mean, this is after his restoration. I mean, he's been preaching. Thousands have been getting saved. Folks have been getting healed. Peter's being used by the Holy Spirit. What in the world, what, what did he do? Verse 12. For before that certain came from James. What's this all about? Consider that James, that brother of Jesus, we believe, the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. So remember, Peter's in Antioch. He's in He's in Paul's home church. For before certain came from James, the Jerusalem church, he did eat with the Gentiles. So Peter's there with Paul, and he's hanging out with the Gentiles and uh, having a good time. It'd be like it'd be like somebody coming from another church that's not used to this here. <laughs> Who is right? And, and sit down at the table with uh, some of our homeless friends and just enjoying themselves, eating, you know, whatever happens to be served that day, hot dogs, pork sandwiches, pizza, whatever. Having a good time. So before the Jewish Christians came, Peter was eating with Gentile Christians. He was enjoying himself, <clears throat> the freedom he had in Jesus Christ. They had had the meeting. They had had the right hand of fellowship. They were all on the same page. But when they, who's that? But when they, the Jewish Christians, were come, he withdrew and separated himself. You see why Paul's getting irritated? <clears throat> it would be like, Somebody coming from, not exactly, so bear with me with my analogy. It's not exactly the same, but you'll understand what I'm saying. It'd be like somebody coming from another church, but their church didn't know that they were coming here to eat with some homeless folks. Then all of a sudden, some of their folks came unaware, and that person saw them there and got up from eating pizza with the homeless and ease back over here with the home folks. Are you with me? Paul's watching all this. He's not happy. The Jewish Christians show up. Peter is easing away from them. He's easing away from the Gentile Christians. That is. The language, he shrank away. Man, this doesn't sound like Peter. This reminds me, by the way, you can be a Christian a long time, and you can be filled with the Spirit day in, day out, and you can, and I can, we can still blow it. Huh? We can still drop the ball. We can still have a setback. Isn't 1 John 1, 9 great? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that good? Amen. We're all still prone to drop the ball. And I think that's one of the reasons we're getting to see this. So Peter, he's shrinking back. Why? Well, the verse tells us why. Why in this particular case? Fearing them which were of the circumcision. His people came in from his home church to Antioch. He sees them and he's afraid of what they may say or do, so he eases back over by them. What does God say about fear? What does Paul say about fear in 2 Timothy 1.7? Um, 
For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Before I go to another word, I want to flip, I want to flip the illustration. Because I can just as easily be guilty. I'm far more comfortable out here or in a ditch than in a ginormous traditional church. Can you tell? <laughs> So let's say that I'm visiting a local traditional church. By the way, just as important with their mission as ours here. I'll say that again. As important, all of us servants with their mission as ours here. And let's say I'm there and I had to put a coat on and a tie. And I'm there, and I'm trying to be all things to all people because it's just the right thing to do. And let's say three of our friends roll in off the street, and I look around, shed the coat, shed the tie, and head back over with my people. <laughs> Same deal, right? Same deal, sort of. You get the point. Peter was uncomfortable. He was afraid what they would have thought or said or what was going on in their hearts. He should have taken a stand. Let's bring it home. Peter had known that God did not require Gentiles to come under the law of Moses for salvation. He learned this from the vision God gave him. Mark them down in Acts 10, 10 through 16. I mean, God showed Peter himself without Paul even being in the picture. He took him to Cornelius. He learned this from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the Gentiles who believe, apart from being circumcised in Acts 10, 44 through 48. He learned this by the agreement of the other leaders of the church in Acts 11, 1 through 18. This wasn't new news to Peter. Now, Peter turned back, he turned back on all that he had known about the place of Gentiles in the church, and he treated uncircumcised Gentiles as if they were not saved at all. David Guzik. That was happening with a letdown from Peter. And Paul didn't like it, and he's going to his face. Hill to Diamond, Grace. Now, I'll ask the question again before we close. How many of you like conflict? How many of you know it's necessary at times? Alone said a man that I have banned. We had to do this when we started working. We have taken it to the streets. Before that, NLO. In consistency what I learned, with what I learned from Waterfront Rescue Mission is that when you lose order in a religious establishment. Sometimes people refuse to be nice. They refuse to follow just Christian decency and order. Sometimes people have to be removed. It's biblical. And Waterfront does that. They call it a ban. And they put in their records that, that, uh, that Jim Smith, is there a Jim Smith in the room? Good. The Jim Smith, the petition's name, was banned because he wanted to get in a fight with a chaplain. And that's a long band, let's say, that's a year. So because what we've learned through our work here, sometimes we have to ban folks. So back to the story. Alone sat a man who had finished his band and was welcomed back through grace and open arms here. And he came back. And alone sat the man at the table. Now at other tables, there were Christians, many Christians, in good standing. And there I was, with my plate of food, fried eggs, and bacon. You know, there I was. I looked around the room. Where do you think God wanted me to sit? Please stand.